Hello, I'm Stolzno Zero, and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about metal arms glitch in the system. Now, I'm not just talking about any metal arms glitch in the system. I'm talking about metal arms, gl well, metal arms 2, whatever, whichever, you know, title they were going to have after that. So, people have always been saying like, oh, you know, I wish there was a metal arms 2, you know, that sort of stuff. And to be honest, I've wanted this as well. Everybody's wanted... You know, everybody who's, you know, all of the people that have at least seen and played the game has has known that there uh, there was originally going to be a Metal Arms 2. Or maybe you didn't know that. Maybe you're new to this, and that's why you're watching today's video. So before I continue on, make sure you leave a like and subscribe so that you can see these types of videos on your homepage and, you know, some other proper Metal Arms gameplay. So today we're going to be talking about this, and... Metal Arms 2 was actually cancelled, um, and this was this was made this, like this article that I'm looking at now was made in 2016, 11th of the 4th, 2016. Um, so it says here the original Metal Arms glitch in the system was a third-party shooter game developed by Swinging Ape Studios and published by Vivenda Universal and Sierra Entertainment in the late 2003 for PlayStation 2, Xbox, and GameCube. While the game did not sell a lot, it soon became a cult classic, and many loved its fun gameplay and the story mode and multiplayer. The game's story ended with the cliffhanger, and the team did start on Metal Arms 2. So they did start on Metal Arms 2, and... So they did start on Metal Arms 2, like, very soon after the actual game. But the project had to be stopped um, when they were signed to work on StarCraft Ghost for Blizzard Entertainment. StarCraft Ghost was initially in development by Nihilistic Software, but in June 2004 they were removed from the project, and Blizzard gave it to Swinging Ape Studios to continue. But then... Of course, because Swinging Ape Studio, you know, they were just a small team, and, you know, to assure quality work on such an important and hyped game such as StarCraft Ghost, they had to use all of their resources. So they used every single one of their resources on StarCraft Ghost. You know, this, you know, big important game. They didn't want to, you know, disappoint, and they wanted to make that game, you know, that game was more of a higher priority for some reason. So... They weren't able to continue the Metal Arms sequel, Metal Arms 2. So, only a few concept art and early ideas from Metal Arms 2 were convenienced before their cancellation of the game. One of the developers remembered a few details on the characters, which I'm going to be showing you guys on screen right now. The first thing that you can see on screen is the Goliath. Now, this was going to be the next generation Titan, which was designed for crushing and smashing droids like ants. So, I'm assuming that one hit, like one like big stomp from this like Goliath character, one stomp, one stomp from that guy, and you're just completely just in pieces. So I reckon that would have been like one of the big bosses. Um, so that was, that was gonna be a thing. And then, a Pinto pictured hereafter one has been captured and repurposed by droids. So Pinto was going to be captured and repurposed uh, by the droids, and the droids were going to have Pinto. So Pinto is a light, fast, hit and run buggy that can carry four grunts. One driver, one gunner, two clinging desperately to the sides. So you can have, you know, one person that's droid. So this was going to be for four players, so you know, if you're playing multiplayer with your four people on Xbox or something like that, you could have someone driving, you could have someone in the, you know, the turret or the gun thing, and then you could have two other people hanging off the sides, and I'm assuming you could use like your, any of your guns, like your mining laser, you know, anything like that, and you could just hang off the side and shoot like that. I would love, I would love to see that, you know, in, in the game now, or like, you know, have this actual Metal Arms 2 become a thing, because, you know, they had no resources now, because they used them all up um, on a game that was, for some reason, higher priority than this one. Even though they started this one, you know, earlier on. Like, I don't understand that, but anyway. Um, then there was going to be Commando, uh, which was an elite mill, an elite mill shock trooper, uh, similar in abilities to the droid Commando, but more heavily armored. So this one's going to be even more difficult to defeat than the original droid, than the droid Commando. So it's going to be <laughs> difficult. And then they were going to have a corrosive suit, which Krunk was going 
to turn the wrecked shell of General Corrosive into a mech suit that Glitch could jump into and use like a vehicle. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that being in Metal Arms where you just jump into the suit and then like you're able to be like a big mech suit? Like look at that, that's amazing. So all, all of these will be showing up on the screen and it's absolutely amazing just looking at these. ATAB. Um, the person doesn't remember what it stands for, but it's an armored droid troop carrier. Troops can ride on top and shields on the legs allow them to use it for advancing cover in combat. So they could so you could have troops riding on the top of it and then the shields and legs could allow them to sit there and you know just barge through just absolutely all of the enemies or all of the droids. I don't know <laughs> what any of these are for. You know some some of them are quite obvious and some of them are not quite obvious for who they're for. But I think the rest of these are for droids. So Droid Explorer, an old battered robot that's been offsetting Iron Star for years. For so long, in fact, it has completely missed the whole mill slash droid war thing. So, there was going to be a droid explorer that was exploring Iron Star for so long that he didn't even know about the mill droid war. And so I'm assuming he would have come back and maybe he was going to be like someone you could trade with, like, um... You could trade in washers for something that, you know, some high-tech weapons or something like that. That would have been pretty cool to have him be able to, you know, to trade with this this explorer, you know, gone to the, you know, Iron Star, and that would have been pretty cool. So uh, then we have the droid engineer, Mr. Fixit, able to build and repair just about anything. So this, could have, this would have been another thing. So they were going to have things where you're, you know maybe your weapons, maybe your vehicles, or, you know, something, something breaks, and then you could go and ask this guy, hey, can you repair this, and maybe that might cost some washes as well, or maybe even, you know, some chips or something, well, no, I don't think there would be chips, I think washes is the main currency in this game here, so I'm thinking, you give him, you give this engineer some washes, then you're able to get some fixing done for whatever's broken. So that's another good thing. They're like they, they were gonna add a lot of good stuff. Next thing that I want to see is like online multiplayer. That'd be great. Um, but then we've got Droid Trooper. The first droids actually designed for combat rather than repurposed from some other job. Fairly efficient grunts. So we were gonna have proper efficient, like you know, more power like more I wouldn't say overpowered I'd say more stronger troops because you know how you've got like the the normal like miners like they were they were just meant for mining I think um, whereas we've got actual droid troopers now or we would have had and they would have been more stronger they would have been you know more durable they wouldn't die in just like a couple of shots you know they'd be actually pretty good in combat and you know make the game a bit more easier, maybe? I don't know. You'd probably need them for, like, going against the Goliath or the Pinto. I don't know. So... Oh, well, not the Pinto. The Pinto is for, yeah, for us, so yeah. Um, the next thing is, of course, well, the last thing, I guess, that we can see here that this guy remembers is uh, the Droid Commando. Uh, we, um, elite combat troops, or at least as elite as droids get, faster, stronger, smarter, and more heavily armored than the troopers. So we were going to have a Droid Commando that was going to be as elite as droids get. Now, I don't know how elite a droid can get, but I think if... If that's as as lead as droids get, I, I'm wondering about how powerful these things actually are. Like, I'm looking at these, like this concept art and stuff now, and I'm I'm gonna say it right now. I think these are gonna be, well, these would have been. I keep saying they're gonna be. It's not gonna happen. I don't think. I don't think it's ever gonna happen anymore. It's been so long. Um, but yeah, these would have been so good to have in the game. Of course, this is only concept art. They would have changed or you know. But this was pretty much in general what they were going to look like and it's pretty cool just seeing them here like that so and then it, says, it goes on to say well we're, while work on Starcraft Ghost proceeded in May 2005 Blizzard Entertainment decided to acquire Swing and Ape and they became part of the popular company after a while Starcraft Ghost was also put on an indefinite hold and never completed so this entire time 
they were working on this, you know, StarCraft Ghost, they were working on this amazing game, and then only for it to be put on hold and never completed anyway. So they used up all of their resources, every single one of their resources, and it never got completed anyway. So, you know, while they still had all of this concept art for Metal Arms, why, why did you do that? Why would you go ahead and, you know, just throw away all your resources at this game that, you know, you could have had, like, this community love this one, and you win through away Anyway, anyway, it's, it's, I, I, I ramble, I ramble. But that's just ridiculous, the fact that they went and, you know, they just, why? Why would you do that? Metal Arms 2, well, like, it might, it could have been a thing, maybe. We don't know. Had they not have used all their resources on that other game, you know, maybe we could have had at least half a game, a demo of a game, I don't know. We could have had people, you know, ripping the game off of, like, the demo or something, and, you know, maybe we might get some fan creations of this game in the future, I doubt it, because it's been ages. But then we've got, like, the plot. So, in the middle of, so I'm just going to read this off of the thing here, I'm going to, like, try and summarize it as much as I can. In Metal Arms 2, it would have been revealed that Glitch was indeed created by the Morbots. The Morbots then initially planned Glitch for the droids to find. The big reveal in Metal Arms 2 was that General Corrosive, the main villain of Metal Arms, was created by Morbots, and was Glitch's brother. Like, this is the first time I'm reading this as well. Exavolt was originally thought to be the creator of General Corrosive, but it was revealed that he was only a pawn used by the mill by, by the by the Morbots for their master plan. The Morbots were never seen in the first game, though it is known that they live under the surface of Iron Star. The Morbots generate and control of massive power consumed by the bots of the surface. x wants that power at his fingertips so that he can win the war and rule the planet. But there can only be a few gateways, or there are only, there are only a few gateways that lead down to the Morbot region, and the gateways appear to have no doors. Players can see one of these Morbot gateways in the game when Glitch takes the massive lift up and out of the Morbot region. The next level is the first of the Mill City levels. When that level starts, the structure behind Glitch is a Morbot gateway. The markings match that on Glitch's head. Exavolt never could figure out how to open the gateway, so he came up with a plan of drilling through the planet's surface to gain access to the Morbots region. The giant, drill, the giant drill in the R&D facility was part of this. It's the mill's way of doing things. Sloppy, brute force. The mills flooded into the Morbot region and occupied it, but the Morbots were nowhere to be found. They would re-emerge in Middle Arms 2, where Glitch discovers he was a pawn and killed his brother, he is motivated to settle the score with the powerful Morbots. So basically, Glitch was designed by the Morbots, and then the, they initially planned... So he was planned to be found at the very beginning. He was planned to be found by, by the droids, and then they were going to have the big reveal in Metal Arms 2. General Corrosive was also created by the Morbots, and was Glitch's brother. This is like, this is, I don't even know what to even say about this, like, this is so much new stuff to me, like, I have no idea, but, yeah, anyway, that's pretty much all of the information that I've found so far. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this. From what I can gather from this, basically, Metal Arms 2 was gonna, like, be a big reveal of, you know, this big thing where, you know, the Morbots had created Glitch and stuff, which, you know, that would have, that would have been great to see all, at least all of these new and amazing things, but alas, it was never to be. Metal Arms 2 and StarCraft Ghost both failed. That's surprising to me. I don't know if that's ever been done before, where some, like, a company goes out of their way to cancel one game to go on to another game and then have that game be cancelled anyway and then now you don't have t both games so both of the communities and companies aren't happy so anyway if you did enjoy this video please leave a like subscribe ring the notification bell and all that lovely stuff and yeah that was why the reason why Battle Arms 2 was cancelled thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one goodbye <laughs>